Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our 2000, no, yes, 2019 first meeting, January 9th. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, we'll call this meeting to order. It is a tri-board meeting since it's the first one of the month. Um, unfortunately, it's a bi-board meeting because we only have a uh, finance committee and the select board here this evening. Um, so we will call the meeting to order and our part of most of our tri-board um, meeting was going to be in budget preparation. And um, David was going to start off with his um, have a presentation for us. So the Finance Committee has seen part of this presentation before, so sorry if there's any repetition. There's hard copies on the table, both the preliminary warrant as well as the PowerPoint presentation here. I uh, <coughs> was asked by the Select Board to give a deeper explanation as to the administrative charges associated with the Enterprise Fund. So I put together a small presentation just to walk through the history, the methodology, and then just to walk through the numbers and see if there's any questions associated with that. So if I could have the, the first slide. All right, so Hadley maintains three enterprise funds. It's sewer, there's water, and there's Hadley Media. Hadley Media is the most recent. It was created a couple of years ago, three years ago. Uh, the others are ancient, measured in decades. Uh, it's governed by Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, F and 1 half, and you know you're in Massachusetts when you're talking about F and 1 half. Uh, <laughs> there's a manual published by the Department of Revenue about how enterprise funds are to be operated and it includes information about the administrative charges, and that's a link to the website. I have the next slide, please. All right, many decades ago, the select board, long before my time here, made a um, policy decision that the enterprise funds were to be self-sufficient. That is to be that there's no taxpayer money supporting sewer water at that time, and then most recently, Hadley Media. Uh, there were some exceptions to this allowed for capital projects, so the water filtration plant the debt is funded 50-50 through general fund and the water enterprise fund. There was some Route 9 water work that was also uh, funded through the general fund, but the operations are supposed to be entirely self-sufficient without reliance on taxpayer money. I can have the next slide. <coughs> Uh, the problem is, is that sewer, water, and Hadley Media Enterprise funds, their operational budgets, which cover salaries and, uh, and expenses, don't actually cover all of the expenses associated with operating these enterprise funds. For example, benefits, that's life insurance, uh, health insurance, uh, retirement, unemployment, Medicaid, Medicare rather, these are not uh, covered by those the operating budgets for the enterprise fund. Neither of the costs for town officers who do a lot of work with the enterprise fund, so the treasurer, the collector, the assistant treasurer, the assistant collector, me, and a couple of other uh, uh, staff members. Also not included are the uh, expenses associated with the staff outside of the water treatment plant and the sewer treatment plant and the Hadley Media Studio, the physical plant that's used to support these other officers and what they're doing. So buildings, property insurance, uh, 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 risk, of, risk of sure, uh, insurance, um, liability insurance not are, are not included in the enterprise operation budgets. And uh, OPEB, after FY 2014, we started funding our OPEB obligation seriously. And when that first started, we didn't have any OPEB funding through the enterprise funds, even though we had retirees in those enterprise funds. Uh, so to correct this matter of hidden costs, the Department of Revenue allows uh, a system of administrative charges to ensure the taxpayer money is not supporting the enterprise funds. <laughs> so I came here in FY 2000, 2006 and I inherited a system of administrative charges 
uh, that for water and sewer at that time that consisted that of many formulas at work, some of them competing, and undocumented methodology, and sometimes I was left to making wild guesses as to what a charge particular may, may obtain for administrative charges. The result was a set of formulas that were opaque and difficult to understand. The Finance Committee at the time didn't like it. Select Board didn't like it. I didn't like it. So I spent a couple of years tinkering. Okay. So I spent a couple of years tinkering and I came to the point where I decided that if you take a rough, rough gem and you polish it, you come up with a beautiful jewel. But if you take a lump of coal, you polish that, you still have a lump of coal. And I decided that the system that I inherited was a lump of coal and that we needed to start over from scratch. So working hand in hand with the Finance Committee at that time, we looked around for best management practices from other towns and developed a unified formula that I think is transparent, rational, comprehensive, fair, and most importantly has a documented methodology so everybody can follow it and understand what the assumptions are. So just to walk through the numbers, A, B, and C. A is the indirect costs, B are the direct costs, C are the open costs. A is divided into two subgroups, salaries and expenses. So if you look at this, salaries, the total town budget for salaries and benefits is $10.3 million. Water is 300000 and change. Sewer is a little higher, 300000 and change. And HPAT is uh, 17000 and change. These represent uh, percentages of the total budget. 3% for water, 3% for sewer, and uh, almost uh, two-tenths of a percent for, for the HPAT. So you take the, the salaries and benefits for the people who work in town hall, who are directly responsible for administering water, sewer, and handling media, and you come up with a total of $400,000 and change for their salaries and benefits. You apply this percentage here to this number here, and you come up with indirect costs right here, 13,000 for water, 14,500 for sewer, and having media for about $500. Next slide. So that was indirect costs part one, that's the salaries. The expenses are the next part to complete the indirect costs. So non-personal uh, expenses for the town is $7.6 million, which makes intuitive sense, 7.6 plus the 10 million and change comes up to the budget of $19 million. Of that, $800,000 is for water, $862,000 is for sewer, and a hundred, um, a hundred, is that right? My receipts. 50, 154 for HPAT. Um, so again, you get the same, you get different percentages, but the formula is the same. You, you get these numbers here, 10 and a half percent, 11 percent, 2 percent. You take the expenses, not the salaries and benefits, but the expenses for the, the officers that work on the sewer, water, and Hadley media plus legal expenses, plus insurance, you come up to $640,000. You apply the 640 to the percentage, and you come up with 66,000 for water, 71,800 for sewer, 12,600 for, for um, Hadley Media. So that's the indirect costs. The next one are the direct costs. This is rip and read. Okay, there aren't any formulas associated with this. This is a report that I get from the treasurer's office. What are the benefits for health insurance for the three enterprise funds, life insurance, Medicare, workers' comp, retirement assessment, and we just read those numbers, we add them up. 114,000 for water, 115,000 for wastewater, Hadley Media is $1,200. So the final part of this is the OPEP. 
FY19 OPEB contribution was the 18 number times 2.5%. That came up to $263,000. And because this is a benefit, we just looked at the total payrolls for the percentages. Water is 4.4% of total payroll. Sewer is 3.9% of total payroll and less than 2%, less than 2.5% for Hadley Media for, for the OPEC cost. Again, you come up with totals 11,600 for water, 10,400 for sewer, and about $600 for Hadley Media. Final slide, A plus B plus C, you take the indirect charges, direct charges, and the OPEC charges, and you come up with a total assessment. So, I understand that there's concerns on both sides of this equation. Some people feel that this is too high to be assessing the enterprise funds. The people who do the work at Town Hall, when they think about their time and they see that only 3% of their time is being allocated to each of the enterprise funds, they say, wait, that, wait a minute, that's way too much. But, so this splits it down the middle. Um, and I hope that this is a clear explanation as to what the enterprise funds are for, how are they calculated, and how are they applied. Do you have any questions? So, looking at the methodology that we've been using since 2013, it, when you're looking at, when we think about the drivers behind it, mm -hmm. um, it would seem that um, the level of pay that people are receiving within most departments, given the fact that we have some people with significant tenure with, you know, within those departments, mm -hmm. makes the, the percentage that much higher. Um, so these numbers could actually reduce fairly significantly, I would imagine, with turnover at some point or natural attrition. Right? I mean, yeah, is, you change, is change the variables, you'll change the, the result. Uh, not on benefit wise, you're not. <clears throat> yeah, the, most of the charges for administrative charges is in benefits, but if you're mm -hmm. talking about the indirect charges, the buildings aren't really going to change. Mm -hmm. Turnover is going to cost you more because you're paying the people who retired. Oh, we've been through this 10 times already. No, John, I'm talking about so some of the allocations are based on percentage of payroll. <clears throat> So if somebody oh, leaves right, and they're yeah. making a higher rate of pay the and they're replaced yeah. with somebody. But what you said was turnover. Turnover is going to be worse. Yeah, sorry. I, I, meant th I meant that percentage is so that 4% of could drop down to 3.5%. Yeah. So these numbers aren't only going to go up. It's very possible that they could come back down again. But they're going to be plus or minus a few thousand dollars because it looks like the biggest contributor it's is the, the direct cost, the benefits. The benefits yeah. That's over 50% of each of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I would imagine, would stay relatively the same. Mm -hmm. Well, especially because we've added OPEB over the last couple of years, which um, certainly boosted that at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every time we get to that point. And you have to keep that in there. There's no way of and changing that. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're paying it. Yeah. Yeah. So why do we? <coughs> or I should say, why don't we pay some of these direct costs, like you said, the rip and read stuff, mm -hmm. right out of the enterprise fund instead of doing transfers and you know one department paying another and, and complicating it. I mean, you can eliminate you know, the B or the C or whatever from the equation. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. You can do that. Uh, the the di direct costs are obligations to the town, so you want to what we've done in, in the past is we've always made those res uh, that responsible to one department only so that we can have better control over an obligatory payment as a, for, say, retirement or health insurance. Uh, so, but some towns do it. Some towns supplement. Uh, across the board. Yeah. Some towns take their employee benefits and fully load the departments. I just, it's, yeah, I just look at it from a which was one of the calculations originally before you changed it in 2013. 
state. It, OPEB at the time, probably 10 years ago, was not as high as it was right now. And it wasn't we weren't even we doing, weren't doing it doing 10 it. years ago. <clears throat> that's why I, I, I know, I know. No. I mean, no, that's, but, the, that's the problem. But it was in there. And, you know, if they didn't budget for it, then you didn't, it wasn't put in at the time. No, no city or town had it, had it in 10 years ago. None. Yeah, that that was a big snafu everywhere that yeah, that the, the wasn't even being addressed. You know, it needs to be there, so mm. it's not nothing that can go away. I'm not no. saying that by any means. And actually, it should be in with each department because it takes care of the people that retire from those departments. Yes. Yes. So that should actually is true to their departments. Right. Yeah, that seems like the only wiggle room in this calculation is the. A1 and A2, you know, the mm -hmm. indirect costs and the salaries. Yeah, salaries and expenses, you know. I think maybe you could try to argue in that area, but the direct costs and the OPEB, I mean, those are kind of fixed. You know, whether you, what, however you take it out this way or direct from the funds. Mm -hmm. I mean, allocations are always problematic here. You're always going to have situations where people can take a contrary viewpoint sure. and say there's no way that X number of people are really costing the town that amount of money. I've always been a fan of come up with a methodology and stick with it. Just be consistent. And I'm not arguing to change it. I just don't under, I just didn't understand the rationale of why we did it this way versus yeah. Yeah. some other way. So. <coughs> Now later on when we get to talking about the warrant, uh, we're going to try to fix some of the difficulties we experienced with setting the recap uh, this particular year and it has everything to do with how we treat the administrative charges. We've got to come up with a better methodology for presenting this in the budget uh, when we go to town meeting. So we'll talk a little bit more about the transparency and the allocation of sewer water Hadley media to the general fund in order to take care of the obligations. Okay. And go on to the copy FY20 code. Well, can we I just, mean, just pause there for a moment? So um, I think and I think I'm the one that asked David a while back to to bring more information because there have always been a lot of questions about the enterprise chargebacks and they do come up every every budget cycle. Mm -hmm. um, usually and we have a DPW director so probably going to really be coming up again you know when he he sinks his teeth into it. Um, does anybody have any major concerns right now? I mean it wouldn't preclude us from making a Methodological, is that a word? A change in method, change in methodology at, at some point, but well, I guess it would depend on how how you want to revise it. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not who's, who's not exactly away. sure which yeah. which way to go. I mean, they came up with this. Linda, you were on the finance committee at the time, mm -hmm. right? When we came up mm -hmm. with this original one. So, do you have any thoughts or inputs on if there's anything out there that we should be doing differently? I really don't because, um, you know, you think it's a high percentage and what, whatever percentage you don't allocate fairly over is borne by the rest of the departments. I mean, no matter how you look at it, a third of our payroll is, well, it's highway, which include I, I don't know how much of highway is, uh, I'm not, what percentage would? Like 4%? Sewer water three, be three, on three, highway. Five or um, six. Six. Two thirds of it? Water is. Two thirds of well, of, of DPW, yeah. two thirds of DPW was when water and sewer. When they created the DPW, that's when everything got right. split three ways. Right. Which, so which okay, is so not pretty even. It's like two thirds of DPW was water and sewer. Because a lot of the highway okay. that should have come out of general general funds are now coming out of water and sewer. The way they split it, third, third, third. Well. So I, I don't know about that. What I, what I, I know, know about is, okay, that. That's yeah, fact. Yeah, but what I know is that a third of um, the the payroll is is DPW. So a third of it, I and mean, then we have to start with there. So whether John is two thirds of that is appropriate or not is something that would be beyond what you know I could. So that one third with. is actually cut into taxes. 
Just taxes, like, but yeah. three one thirds <coughs> taking out of each department. Yes. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. So it's one third of the budget, but they're actually taking a third from each separate entity. Um. And, and a lot of times it's not, it has nothing to do with the other two departments. It's just robbing Peter to pay Paul is all you're doing. You know, you're subsidizing the highway department so, through the water and sewer. So the issue you're raising is not where, where it is in relation to the rest of the town, but within the DPW Within budget. the DPW. When they so, created a DPW, yeah. we created okay. this million dollar problem. So that's, that to me, a different issue than what we, we've right. been looking at. So I'll, okay. you know, that's the select mm -hmm. one to take it. Yeah. So I just want to that's make sure I understand what John's saying. So just a, let's just take you as an example. So I'm assuming you're assigned to sewer. Yeah. Right. So is this right, Linda? So so John is one of the, he's part of that percentage that we're looking at that says sewer department payroll. That would include John. Yeah. And are you saying, John, that because you're not 100% sewer, there are times where you're plowing and you're doing other things? No, those those are separated into the highway or the snow budget, but a third of that now is coming out of sewer. A third, a third what? You're one third, one third, one third of the Department of Public Works is split three ways. So even it's though even I'm split. even though I'm working forty hours for sewer, mm -hmm. what if if and when I do plow snow, it's coming out of highway. Mm -hmm. that, that's Which what only one third yeah. of that is coming out of highway, the other two thirds are coming out of water and sewer. For snow plowing? Where are you getting the figures from? You're taking one third and one third and one third from the start for the Department of Public Works. But there's a snow and budget removal um, in the DPW a line, line item, item think, yeah. in that that covers you're plowing, you're plowing for that, whether yeah. or not it, it's, <coughs> like it doesn't come out of sewer when you're plowing. Like the DPW director, isn't, don't you take his salary? Right. Yeah, one third, one third, so that's, one third. Is that what you mean? Yeah. The assistant. Yeah, you're, not, you're third, not talking about third, individuals assigned. <coughs> each of well, them. Yeah, you're she, about, oh, she okay. used me specifically for the but you are at comparison. Yes. You say, so you're direct. Yeah. Yes. So you're it, cleaning. It's, yes, everybody else. And, and, and most are okay. assigned to one or another. Yes. That there are some that are split and some cover the other and shifts and then it comes out of the other budget. And that's what I'm saying. When when they created the Department of Public right. Works, this that's when they deal, created the problem. Mm -hmm. But what Amy is referring to is certain sa the certain salaries and yes. other expenses that are belong to the DPW are split in thirds. But in those Waters. budgets, mm -hmm. and just just even as she compares it to the snow and ice and highway, it, it's still that one third of that budget mm -hmm. still comes out of all three out through the DPW. It's split that way. So when we're talking about these salaries, the water department, somewhere in there, if you go to like the A1 slide, somewhere in that 309000 is a third of the DPW director's salary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Administration. Okay. It's, right. it's and, most and administration. of the administration costs. Yeah. Right. But so, doesn't it make sense that the DP, DPW director is, is responsible for water and sewer and that some allocation should go to them? Yeah, no, I understand that. Absolutely, it's correct. But the way, when, when this was all uh, originally thought, all, the, all, this, all these equations weren't there yet. And somebody just took one third, one third, one third out of the sky and mm -hmm. created a DPW. Okay. It, it was the only fair way to do it, but now it's costing us in the water and the sewer through the enterprise funds. And originally they put the enterprise funds together so the general government wouldn't get that money, so it was originally interpreted for those departments to get that money and hold it for capital expenditures. So mm -hmm. if there was a water break, if mm -hmm. there was a sewer break, mm -hmm. if there was major improvements that needed to be done, it could have could be used out of those funds. And out that's of those what sewer reserves are and yes. Reserves are. Yes. 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 That's what it that's how it was all designed right. to work originally before mm -hmm. the DPW was formed and we created this other problem. So you're arguing basically that <coughs> since 
water and sewer are not exactly a third of mm -hmm. what the DPW does, then we're, say we're the, the setting a budget for the, for the highway right, right. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that the, maybe the director shouldn't be paid a third from each one, maybe it should be paid you know, a quarter from Or the maybe it should be dictated on like number of employees. employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then you can also yeah. argue, what yeah. is Mike I mean, Pequenot yeah. doing? He's actually almost 100% sewer. Right. How much is Sharon doing? Was she yeah. probably 75? So y you can get down to those yeah. granular allocations, but then that starts to create another problem because then you reassign somebody and then you're arguing about it. So well, I think it you know, probably will be worthwhile if you wanted mm -hmm. to take a look at another model to see what would you know, actually work or whatever, but uh, uh, we're not going to solve it tonight for sure. No, and, and I, you know, what I wonder is, I think that Amy, did you have any argument. take on it? No, I mean, I always thought the one, I, it, it seemed to me like the one third, one third would work, but I'm not part of that department to know really how much time does the director spend at those other two, or I don't know the job duties of those people who are affecting the salaries, is it, are, are those realistic numbers or not? I would probably look at the director to say, um, it, are, are these, yeah. can, you, can you take a second look to make sure, you know, this is. Originally, I mean, true. you had a, a superintendent in each department that were 100% for that department mm -hmm. water, sewer, and highway. Mm -hmm. You know, then you threw the director in and the foreman and took all all the semi-management positions out of the departments so you know it, it, it's not it's still not right do, do we do that needs adjust I, sure. I think i'm not so sure this is the problem i i think the the, the real issue people have is the cost of sewer, the cost of water, the fact that our reserves are down, the right. the pricing of it, um, not wanting, to, not, clearly not wanting to have to absorb significant price increases in short order. And the whole conversation we just had when we were looking at the rates, um, and in the absence of of having a better solution to that, people are kind of coming back here saying, "Oh, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe we're over allocating." We could argue about this all day long. You I think what? there's a bigger issue, which is how I we're said going to address yeah, water and sewer. I, I said it right along. You know, uh, on capital expenditures should come out of taxation through town meeting. You know, for for water repairs, for sewer repairs, because the uh, the the portion of the town that has sewer and most of the town that has water. You know, are, are just barely keeping up with their budgets right now and their operating costs mm -hmm. and and their their OPEB and their. But if there's insurance. if there's a problem on somebody's sewer line that's on sewer, they they sure don't mind us using the sewer enterprise to fix those sewers. I understand because that's what it's there for, and they paid for it. But like the sleeve lining down by the malls, that should come out of taxation. It really should, and not affect. The money that we have for a real emergency, well, unless you consider it an emergency. So I'm just wondering if that's the conversation that maybe you know, we you should still be got, having. You still and got nine, away from this. You still got 1904 water lines in the ground that that really need to be replaced up through Bay Road, South Maple Street. Mm -hmm. All that old cast iron line needs to be replaced. And we've been talking about it since I've been here for 16 years. No, we did we did West Street and Bay Road over here. We got yeah, but we haven't morning. done South Maple yeah. over there or up towards going the other way on Bay Road. So, yeah, I mean we've done some, but we haven't done a whole lot. And we replaced lines on Route Nine, which we're still in the process of doing yeah. too. So, you know, slowly but surely things are getting done a little bit more than what they had been. You know, and and on the water side, I, I'd still like to do something with them Mount Warner wells. That's been, we've been drinking that water for 60 years and there was nothing wrong with it. We didn't need to filter it. You know, if, if there's some way we can figure out what we can do with those two wells up there, if we need to treat it or filter it at some point, then, you know, maybe that's what we should do. We've well, got plenty of water. We should, we should retest them for the percolate and yep. see. They, the see. state wanted them retested yeah. for quite some time now and it hasn't been done put that on the 2019 agenda, right? Okay. I think, I think that's in the capital plan well preconditioning for Mount Warner. No, you're reconditioning Bay Road Wells. 
Yeah, but I think in the future capital plan we have the amount of water wells uh, lined up. I can't remember what year it is. Right now we're 2019. I can so remember <laughs> in the I know where I am now. <laughs> let's, which, all right, let's which go. Which year coming let's, up? I, I hear you. So let's let's go on to the next um, part of the tri-board here. You Is that the warrant or the COLA? You want, you want to talk quickly about the COLA? Okay, so uh, the budget instructions have been delivered to all the departments and divisions. Uh, in, in the budget instructions, the uh, uh, the, the select board were going to make a decision about COLA adjustments for the non-union personnel. Uh, I did a quick survey with uh, uh, towns of, of our size, the results are there, and they go from the range of 2% to, uh, it's not here, but the Social Security Administration COLA is 2.8. Uh, we've given at least that to most of the unions and we've also allowed step increases for the unions so for parity sake I uh, make a recommendation that we give a COLA and a step we'll see if we can build that into the town meeting uh, board. Is that on the next part of the on our agenda to vote or do you need to have a vote on it now? Well I figure that, that you all want to discuss it first. Do you have any? I have a question. Can you, so you just talked about COLA and STEP. Mm -hmm. I've always thought about STEP increases as <clears throat> when you have a compensation system that somebody becomes eligible for a STEP, either based on, um, like, you know, in the schools, they actually have the, the grid where, you know, you have a master's degree, master's plus 30, that kind of thing. Um, but in most companies, you get a STEP increase typically based on, uh, you know, longevity of some kind. Right, so mm -hmm. year one, year two, year three, it's step, step, step. Maybe you skip it for a while and have another step after five years, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So for the non-union non and non-school personnel, when we talk about step increases, what are we talking about? Because it seems like some years people get them, sometimes they don't. How do we know where people even... I thought some of the contracts are not in any. Most of the contracts have steps in them. Yeah, they had a step lose, had a step and move up, uh, yeah. drop one at the bottom. Um, we, I don't believe we've given a step increase for three years. Uh, and uh, the concerns by the select board has always been a budgetary one. Um, no, but I mean, what, what does that actually mean for somebody? So let's say... So the step is 3.5% plus the COLA. So everybody, every step is a three and a half percent step no matter what position you're in? Yes. So if we were flush with cash and and you started as an employee in year one, no matter what job you had, you would autom and I know steps max out at a certain point, but right. it, when you start you you would come in and theoretically wherever you came in on the grid, every year you would automatically get a 3.5% increase plus a pull mm -hmm. That's how it's been exercised in the past. Mm -hmm. Years got away of service from or something, one by original, yeah. We, we got away from it when we started uh, awarding colas <coughs> and sometimes step increases at the fall town meeting. And that's, that's a process that we should, A, get away from. We should be giving these increases at the annual town meeting. Um, Shouldn't it be a set schedule, though, mm -hmm. based on longevity, things like that, rather yeah. than just whatever the board feels like for the year? I mean, it's kind of... Well, because we always we weren't able to give a step increase yeah. on a lot of it that we are only able to do the COLA. Right. So yeah. a lot of employees only got reflect. the COLA. I know we had this discussion ten times. Four years. Also. There hasn't been any steps since I got there. So, four so years. four years with no step right now for people that are non-union. But I, I do have a, a question. I mean, I know that we did put in for the um, to review salaries where they are, where they should be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, 
I, I'm listening to some of these and with a, a lot of good arguments, but it sounds to me like it's similar to your situation where you don't have a rhyme and a reason for what you're doing and you don't have a good methodology for how you're giving the steps. Yeah. And I see what happened to the senior center with the last meeting that they didn't feel like they were fair and that this department, the library had an increase and they should be fair with them and why are they not fair? So now we did give an increase to the senior center and gave them the step increase. But now how about the other departments and is it fair and who are you comparing yourselves to? Each each department, a good point, each department should be uh, addressed separately because in the water, in the sewer, in the highway, if you've got credentials, then I can see a step raise. If you got another mm -hmm. license in your pocket, then you're worth another 50 cents an hour or whatever, whatever it may be. But However we do, we have to have a yes, methodology yes. and you have to have it printed. And I know we, we and have, have this have discussion before too about credentials. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, and to that, that's the DPW's contracts, John. Your your contracts should cover that with what yeah. what you're able to do. But we're no, talking no, but right I mean, now about a precedence throughout the whole town. Well, uh, right now we're talking about sure. non-union and what people have to acquire to have their jobs, <coughs> which are uh, classes and yeah. different things that they're required well, the to mandated to go to. Well, the continuing education stuff is crazy now for all licenses. Mm -hmm. right? right, and if you're talking about step equals this amount. You have to be careful when you're raising the amount because mm -hmm. if you keep the step as we have recently in the same place and then you're paying that when that person's no longer there that's what that step is worth then and that's not fair to everyone else who may have been here right for making 15 years yeah, making yeah. Right. so I mean, I, step I eight doesn't mean anything really i agree with you that the, the right thing to do is to build you know, the increases into the budget so it's predictable for folks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. going, going, I mean, there's no question that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But this whole step thing and the, the analysis that we haven't yet embarked on, it's on the agenda tonight. Yeah. I mean, a cost, a, a COLA, I'm more comfortable making a decision on, but the whole step thing is just, I don't know, I'm struggling with that. So, one. what would the board like to see to um, make a decision, step COLA, on step only what would be the way to move forward I mean we, I was gonna say we are doing this as our, the compensation classification plan I mean maybe we can use that as a benchmark and then decide this a little bit better once we get the results of that back I mean I was kind of hoping we'd have something a little before we had to make a decision on this um, because that's important to kind of feel for where we are in the comparison to the surrounding communities, you know, making sure people are getting paid um, equivalent amounts, and so then kind of get a plan from there, but. COLA I'd be okay with, but a step until we have a wage study done to see where we are in relation to you know, what we're currently paying people versus what, what they should be being paid. I don't think it really serves a purpose to give them step increases right now. Can we get that done before annual town meeting so that we could incorporate it into uh, that's part of the the write-up of the uh, classification plan RFP is that uh, we want them to start early and we want them to finish on a particular day mm -hmm. so, okay, so when is that going to start well let's review the uh, the RFP see if you like it okay uh, and then we can get it out the door tomorrow morning okay so we'll do that at further on in the meeting yeah. and I'm just imagining that the outcome of that is not going to be crystal clear because you're going to have you're going to have recommendations but then we're going to have to figure out how do we get from here to there and, and quite honestly I'm I bet my bottom dollar is going to be a multi-year mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. to figure it out because some people may wind up with positions <coughs> I should say people some positions may wind up being effectively frozen other ones may get a market adjustment and we may not mm -hmm. be able to afford it right away and that may get built into a fall tech. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So well, we need to straighten it out at some point. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be done. Yeah, I mean, no, because the first step doesn't there's some seem of the people fair. gonna be happy and there's some people that are it doesn't seem fair that just because you're union that you keep getting all these increases where the non union is is right. getting the short staff. So that seems tough. So if we are able to do something like this, maybe we can look, if for some reason we didn't do the step increase, maybe we can do an extra or do the on the high side of the cola. 
you know, instead of maybe a smaller cola, do a higher cola. So, so you're saying do? Well, cola. you're you're telling me the cola was anywhere between two percent to two point eight percent or something well, like that. And that's Westminster. So I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that maybe yeah. we do higher. But are you suggesting do a higher cola now, now then do the wage that. study? And I just don't know if you're going to be able to give people what they need right. for uh, annual. And then if we did the higher cola, they would have, everyone would have to understand that they may be frozen for longer if they find That's out that they really are yeah. way yeah. above the market price. Right. Um, I mean, so. I'd rather keep the cola kind of in line with, with market, which looks like, yeah. at least for these municipalities, is 2%. Mm -hmm. on the web. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so do we want to just say let's do a call of 2% for now and then evaluate? Don't adjust it after that. annual meet or is it adjust it after annual town meet? Once, we, once we're able to adopt the <coughs> compensation classification plan right. or implement whatever, it. implement it, yeah. mm -hmm. review it. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So these nine towns that were looked at for the FY20 coals, why are those towns chosen? It seems like they were a little bit, uh, as far as geographic location or size, they're a little bit different than Hadley. Yeah, Hadley is a little, diff it's a little difficult to uh, compare to other towns, uh, so we don't compare well to, say, Sunderland or Granby or, or some of the smaller towns. So I tend to go cast the net a little wider terms of town ZQV, that's their tax base, population, uh, distance from a large metropolis, um, and putting the question out there, these are the responses I got. Hmm. Okay. Go to town ward. Is there a decision? Oh, you want to do that? Yeah. Do you want to? Well, wait for a vote. I'll make a motion to go two percent right now. I'll okay. second that. For all non non Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous with the um, finance committee. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. I think they should have some. I definitely think we should. Well, do we need to do some work on it for sure. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it for four years now, so yeah. that's coming up. Coming up. Sure. So, the time that's remaining, <coughs> I've <coughs> prepared a preliminary warrant for the annual town meeting. I believe it has 21 articles on it, and that's probably uh, going to no. increase. Um, <coughs> I don't know that we need to get into this in exhaustive detail tonight, but I think that we can move the football a little bit. First of all, I'm asking for the select board to open the warrant with a closure date of uh, February 13th. Motion, please. Motion to open the warrant. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. With the closing date? Yes. Yeah, so right, for the closing date. Yep. Close the warrant. All right, so the first six articles are the consent agenda. Uh, they're uh, items that don't require debate. They're, they're stock items that show up every year. One is that we can accept and expend grants. Two is that we can accept and expend Chapter 90 money for roads and bridges. Three is short-term borrowing. If we are ever in a position of cash shortage, we can borrow against short-term within one year. Uh, for future anticipated revenue. We've never had to do this, but it's always nice to have this in your back pocket in case something goes boom. Uh, the article number four, the fund balances. This is our sweep up article. Whenever we have uh, projects that are completed and a little bit of money left over, we like to sweep that back into the pots that they came from or if they're a borrowing article to reduce the borrowing authorization in order to clean up the <coughs> part of the amount of accounts. Um, the filters for the water treatment plant, this is a 10-year program to uh, achieve $260,000 of funding. We put $26,000 away in a special stabilization account. 
this payment is the third of uh, ten hour payments. <laughs> so much for that. So I much like for that. that. Third of ten, if we do this, we'll have about $78,000 set aside for that project. CPA Administrative, this is a uh, this is their setup article to provide them with the allocation of the uh, CPA monies into the three pots that are required by law, open space housing and uh, and uh, historic uh, preservation, uh, as well as giving them an expense account so they can talk to lawyers or do seminars. So those six are the consent agenda. Are there any questions or concerns about any of these? Can I get a vote of recommendation from the select board? I know that you don't have a fi form of finance. Uh, can you make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Is there any information that we don't have now that we'll have later? Uh, there's an ex each article has an article, a motion, and an explanation. But I mean, nothing, nothing is possibly going to change between now and I don't think so. I mean, I certainly will bring this back to your attention if there's been any change. Do we? I think we're just putting it on the consent agenda at this point, just making those be okay. our consent <clears throat> agenda. Yeah, because there's <coughs> any detail about the grants or anything like that, or about this blanket kind it's of just a blanket okay. so that we don't have to call a town meeting every time we get a $2,500 grant mm -hmm. to either accept it or to expend that money. So we're just making the outline of the consent agenda, the structure of it right now. The yeah, correct. Fill in before the yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> All right, so here we get into the, the real meat of the uh, town meeting. The first one is a prior year invoice of $1,468. This is owed to ETNL for the uh, water project that was associated with the Route 9 widening. They made a mistake in an uh, invoice a long time ago. Uh, they shortchanged themselves. We closed out that project, closed out the borrowing, closed out the, the grant, the whole project was done. And then a year later, this this came up from the Department of uh, Transportation, $1,400. We tried to make it go away, no dice. So I said, the only thing left I can do is put it on the warrant for payment. It requires a 9 tenths majority vote from town meeting. So. Moving right along. Wasn't it last fall that we yeah. just gave all that money back? Yes, indeed. That yep. project? Yep. yep. Good job. Well, well, it's, awesome. it's not money back, it's ability to borrow. The money back. <laughs> yeah, I thought I just heard this somewhere before last fall. <clears throat> okay. Articles 8, 9, 10, 11. This used to be unified in one article, the omnibus budget. Uh, we have tasked omnibus budgets with one article for 13 budget cycles. Everything went fine. The 14th budget that we put together with one article for the uh, article in motion, we had fits getting the Department of Revenue to accept our information and was a cause of concern for setting the tax rate on the tax capitulation, uh, recapitulation sheet. The cause of the change was a formulaic change on, by the Department of Revenue on the recap sheet on page three, just the way that the enterprise funds are presented along with the administrative charges. So uh, we had to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. So in order to avoid that kind of problem in the future, we're, I'm proposing that we change the way that we do the omnibus budget. I normally uh, like to consolidate things, so this is against my better nature to take one article and make four of them out of it, but I think this, this is the way to go forward. We went to several towns that have enterprise funds and looked at the models that they, that they offered. We're going to war game this, you know, have the financial management team sit down and just walk through and make sure that if we were to pass it in this form, we will get a tax rate in a timely manner for FY 2020. This actually addresses some of the 
presentation arguments we've had in the, the past where there was confusion. Mm -hmm. yep. So I don't like going from one to four, but I think it will actually be more clear. Yeah, there'll be a lot of questions on top of the floor why we're doing it this way. We've always done it that way forever. No oh, carbon of revenue. Probably just be a couple. Yeah. We can get the names. <laughs> 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 Somebody doesn't swallow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so one, one article for the Omnibus Budget General Fund, and then one article each for the three enterprise funds. Okay, so okay. to be determined. So we're to not voting determined. on these tonight. No. So okay. all of these actually from 8 to 16 are to be determined. Yep. Number 12 is the capital article. We have two requests from the school de department that took a vote on the girls' locker room and the unit system for Hopkins Academy. We're going to have, Chris and I have talked about this, Chris being the chair of the capital planning committee, we're going to have a uh, conversation with the school uh, system to see if this is something that can be deferred because they're trying to fast track these two projects for uh, the summertime, this presents a number of logistical issues which are going to be very, very difficult. What was the second one? I heard the girls' locker room and... Univents. Univents. Oh, Don't okay. ask me what a univent is. There's vents in the room that for heating. Okay. Yeah. They were um, trying to change those up. Just on capital, it came to my attention that in the fall we had a couple of capital items. I have three items that differed between the values we had in our capital committee and what got put on the town meeting warrant. Yep. So I'm wondering if we can do anything um, in the spring to remedy that. It's about, it was one, two, three projects and it was about a $14,000 <coughs> difference we'll in short. total. We, we, short. we were voting short. Well, let me explain a little bit of this. We okay. have money set aside for capital <coughs> projects, um, and we appropriated only enough at town meeting in order to, uh, to be able to cover the projects using this other source of funding, which didn't require a town meeting <coughs> vote because we already had one of those. So the money is there. Okay. It just doesn't show up as an allocated vote at that fall town meeting because we already approved that money in a prior town meeting. Okay. All right. So be happy to sit down with you and walk okay, through Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe that. I can walk through that with you later. Yeah. Uh, Hadley Kids Incorporated, this is a project which is still very <coughs> development, but Hadley Kids Incorporated has a sum of money somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 that they would like to transfer. We already voted yes on that, so now you're taking it to town meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we and did. 14 is the same thing. We already voted to expand the uh, premises. We uh, voted for on premise. All right. So we ran out. Of, we ran out of on premise liquor license. Just a little bit of context for everybody. The state sets a quota on the number and types of licenses that we have for alcoholic beverages. Mm -hmm. We were running out of on-premise licenses. That's where you go into a restaurant, sit down, have a beer, bottle of wine, whatever it happens to be. My favorite whiskey sour. <laughs> uh, but in order to keep the economic expansion going, we've got 12 additional licenses, six all alcoholic and six malt and wine only for sit down in restaurants or a pub. But we have run out of the off-premise licenses. Pride was our last one. And the business community is beginning to ask questions about whether we can have additional licenses. So this is here to add three new licenses. And just a flip of the coin, I asked for one all alcoholic and two malt and wine, and I'm not wedded to that at all, whatever you guys want to do. Can we make it a multiple of medical marijuana or, or retail marijuana? Facilities? You already missed a boat on that. <laughs> uh, you see all the revenue you just left flying we away? Have, we should have five yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> We get all okay. drive through <laughs> combined with a gas station. <laughs> so uh, when I had talked to David about this, I, part of my rationale behind it was this is 
money we're leaving on the table as far as licensing revenue, tax revenue, whatever. Uh, so why not get as many as we can? But don't forget that it ties into also as many liquor licenses as you have. You can also have marijuana licenses. So yeah. who brought up that question? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Just break it apart. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's let's dwell a little bit in the weeds on the, the marijuana part. Okay, so the the restriction, the prohibition on mar adult use marijuana is tied to 20% of your available off-premise licenses or package store licenses. So we have seven right now. 20% of seven rounding up is two. If we add three, we bring that up to 10. 20% of 10 is still two. Okay. But the law is a little unclear here. The law says that the 20% restriction applies to license is issued through Mass General Law Chapter 138, which governs liquor licenses. Adding more liquor licenses is done by a special act of legislation, not Mass General Law 138. So this is untested territory, but you may be able to increase those the number of those licenses because they're not explicitly mentioned in Which the, licenses are you talking about? This would be the off-premise licenses. Oh, okay. So I've got a limit of three, but it's possible we could go higher. So Not sure. More. See what we can get. And we don't have to issue them, right? We just, yeah. It just gives us the ability. Though, to this, is a, this is a legal this is a legal question. We obviously want to find out what the Attorney General has to say about all of this. But at, at 10 right now, that caps us at 2 adult marijuana. use marijuana dispensaries, whatever you yeah. call them. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we go to 11, that opens this. If that assumption is wrong, let's say, mm -hmm. if, we could, if we go to 11, then we have 2.1 and we have to a, round up. Then you've got to tangle elsewhere, yes. Unless we separate them. <coughs> Decouple the, the yeah, ratio. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't do that, right? That was the but issue. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and the more you have, if some of these small mom and pop stores sell and they sell with their licenses, you're taking away from that too. You know, there's a there's a lot of ins and outs with it. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, a little bit more restriction. You're you're, you're taking the more licenses you have, the, lot, the more you're taking away from the people who already have them. You know? And if they close, do they just come back? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still, it's nothing set right now. So let's, let's, mm -hmm. it's seven o'clock. So yeah. let's move on here to what else? Uh, Article 15, mm -hmm. land preservation. I've heard of two projects that are floating out there. I don't have any information. Uh, Article 16, we have a couple of ancient maps. Ancient is in 1742 of the town of Hadley. Mind you, town of Hadley included Pelham, Amherst, Hadley, South Hadley and Hatfield back then, so these maps could be of another town. Um, but they're leather maps, drawn on leather, maybe deer skin, and they need to be curated, so that money is, is for there for that purpose. Okay. Stormwater bylaw, this is required by MS4, planning board zoning, article for water, stormwater, adult use marijuana, we have a Prohibition, which or moratorium, which is going to expire in June. We have a um, couple petitioned articles floating around out there. One has to do with the a prohibition on the cultivation of uh, adult use marijuana. And the other one, I don't know what the content is, but I heard that there might be a petition. Okay. Sounds good. So that the <coughs> tip of the iceberg for the town warrant, we're just getting started on it, and we'll have plenty of time over the next couple of months to work on it some more. Is there anything else for the tri board? Or are we all set for tonight? Amy, did you have anything for us? Okay. All right. So we will move into our regular scheduled meeting. Are we live yet? We're live all along on the web. We're live on the web, yeah. We're having trouble with our server, so it's not broadcasting on the TV station right now. It is? It's not. It's not.
Can they hear us? They cannot. They cannot. They can do nothing. They can they watch can your community calendar. Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so we have a consent agenda. Um, we have warrants PR 1926, PR 1925, PR 1924, PR 1923, AP 1927, AP 1926S, AP 1926, AP 1925-2, AP 1925, AP 1924, and AP 1924. We have a, which I would like to read, shall I take that out of context? We had today was uh, a, proclam a proclamation of what we did for uh, Agnes Banish Banash. Um, she turns 100 years old. Was born on January 9th, 1919, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the town of Hadley, by the Select Board. We have a proclamation of 2019. Whereas Agnes Bain Banash was born on January 9th. 1919 to Jacob and Annie Bonash in Hadley, Massachusetts, whereas Agnes joined the United States Army in 1943 where she served as a medical technician until she was honorably discharged in 1946, whereas Agnes is a member and past commander of the old Hadley Legion Post 271, whereas Agnes is the mother of Michael and grandmother of Matthew. whereas Agnes is a lifelong resident of the town of Hadley, and whereas she has earned the respect of all with whom she has come in contact and love and affection of a host of family and friends. Now therefore we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, do hereby deem it an, an honor and pleasure to extend this proclamation to Agnes Bonash on the occasion of her 100th birthday with sincere congratulations and best wishes for many happier, productive years given this ninth day of January 2019, signed by the Board of Selectmen. So, congratulations, Agnes Bonash. <laughs> we could only hope that we might hit that 100, who knows. So. All right, and then we also had uh, Cemetery Bid Awards. And we have Gravestone Marker Restoration award do we have we have a letter from the cemetery committee um, <laughs> gravestone restoration assessment survey four bids were submitted price range of 10,700 to 14,200 historic gravestone services of New Salem Massachusetts submitted the low bid and is the lowest qualified bidder in the cemetery committee recommends approval of the project to Historic Gravestone Services. And then for the grave marker restoration in Hockenham, three bids for the work were submitted ranging in price from $9,650 to $21,200. Conserve Art LLC of Hampton, Connecticut submitted the low bid and is the lowest qualified bidder. And the cemetery committee recommends approval of the conserve art bid. Okay. Do you need a motion on it or no? Consent agenda. Okay. <coughs> uh, we have a Hadley Police Department retirement of Henry Bide, who has been a long time um, dispatcher for the town of Hadley, probably since he was uh, a young man, I can't say what age he was, but he has now retired uh, from his job um, at the University of Massachusetts. Um, therefore, he has to retire from his job here in Hadley, but he will be coming back as a part-time dispatcher also. He has been a uh, most dedicated employee that we've had for a dispatcher, and uh, we're very happy that he's going to return and uh, fill some uh, time on the night shift as he has been. So. Motion for the consent agenda. So moved. Okay. All, in favor. All, all in favor? 
<coughs> Thank you. And do we have any public comments this evening from anybody? Oh, we're all here on business. Great. <coughs> all right. David, uh, we want to. I know the. Uh, We've got a lot of people waiting here while well, we just jump over to the municipal building committee. That was a 715 appointment, though. Okay. Don't, don't we have to all wait? Right. Don't have to wait. But how about uh, how about Christian? How about you jumping in here for Valley Bike? Valley Bike Share. All right. So, um, as you all might know, uh, Valley Bike Share is a series of electric bikes uh, spread out uh, in Pioneer Valley, I guess. Um, right now, there's some in Northampton, some in Amherst, some at UMass, um, and the Valley Bike Share. Had, had approached the town of Hadley to see if we would be interested at all in participating in the bike share program as well. Um, you know, it has, it definitely offers an alternative uh, to public transportation and uh, accessible form of transportation for many people. Uh, a lot of the bikes that get ridden around Northampton and Amherst are for tourism purposes, um, more so than um, people commuting and that kind of thing. Um, East Hampton is also uh, signing on to this new round of people joining Valley Bike Share, and they were able to fund five new stations with a housing choice grant. Um, and now Valley Bike is applying for a new CMAC grant, and they want us to be a part of this grant to put two stations in, in Hadley. Uh, a lot of originally the funding for Valley Bike Share was also through a CMAC grant, and that's how they kind of originally got off the ground. Um, in fact, I think it is competitive. People are really looking at getting the stations in their communities, but I believe Amherst or UMass, one of them, gave up one of their possible stations on the CMAC grant to Hadley because they see us as an important link on the, the bike path. Um, Where did they expect that to be set up? So, um, <laughs> so yes. what, we, what is needed from us uh -huh. is to um, sign on to this uh, CMAC grant. So we would have to um, sign a memorandum of understanding with Valley Bike Share that we are interested in participating in it. Um, we would be put down on the grant application, uh, and that grant application would pay for the station and the bikes that would go on the station. Um, and we would need some additional funds to do the actual installation. So we'd have to put in a concrete pad to place the station on and then have a 24-hour electrical hookup nearby that we would send a drop down to to power the station so the pad is three to four thousand dollars it seems like and the electrical hookup really depends on how close we would be to that electrical point so if there's a street light that's on 24 hours right next to it it's easy if it's across the parking lot it or in a remote location, it's a lot harder. So um, that's all relative. So where did they think they would like this station? So yeah, we uh, had this handout. So and Mall, Whole, Whole Foods, Whole yeah. Foods is at Mount Ferns Mall. <coughs> okay, Mount Ferns. And are, are any of these businesses willing to uh, sponsor it? fund this, sponsor it? Okay, so this is another thing, um, and I talked to David about it, and I still haven't gotten clarification from Valley Bike Share, but uh, each station requires a corporate sponsor um, to handle the maintenance of that station. It's a, what he was telling me, Chris, from Valley Bike Share, was it's a $12,000 a year, and they're looking for three-year commitments for someone to sponsor that. Now it gets a little tricky because if we as a select board or somebody from our select board goes to Whole Foods and says we need $12,000 for the station, that could get into sticky ethical territory. So I'm still not quite sure how we can work that out with them. 
up, right? Mm -hmm. With all their electrical uh, cars, cars yeah. there, yeah. they might want to put in a station yeah. there. I think that would be ideal. Yeah. Is that any town employee would have a conflict of interest? I don't know, and I'm. I reached out to Valley Bike Share to see what their experience has been because that would apply to anybody in Massachusetts. Well, and other towns are sponsoring these but getting sponsors. Other towns are sponsoring them on town property. So right, Amherst is right there in the center. Yeah, you know. South Hadley's at their police station, at their town common. Um, I see a few of them around. But uh, if they were to be put on private property here, like we said, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe quarters or the bike shop there, mm -hmm. or Hampshire Mall, or Mountain Farms Mall, where we didn't, wouldn't have anything to do with it. That was my only question on here. It says uh, Norwatic Rail Trail at uh, Hadley Center. Just wanted to make sure they weren't going to stick it in the middle of the common or something like that. Mm -hmm. no, that would be the Hadley Depot the there, okay. maybe, or the library, the library, I was thinking, too. Yeah, yeah. Or could, I mean, potentially, could we have a volunteer committee, you know, that <coughs> yeah, could, I mean, mean, did the soliciting or whatever is needed that could keep us clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so somehow other towns have been able to do this, and so uh, Valley Bike Share can tell us, okay, so the model that worked well in East Hampton, and I'm just making this up, mm -hmm. uh, is something that would be, we could follow, but having a direct connection to a corporate sponsor by municipal official and municipal employee gets us into ethical territory that we don't want to be in. So we don't want to send Tim, Mike, and Mike knocking on doors? Yeah. That would probably be a bad right. idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for your inspection. Give us 12000 <laughs> yeah. Sponsor this. That go no, yeah. 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 So once you're as part of the sponsoring process, <laughs> could we get, if, if we could find someone who's interested, could they pay for the concrete pad, the electric, that kind of stuff, so that way there wouldn't be any initial cost to the taxpayers because then you would have a heck of a lot more support. Yeah, that's that's possible, and I was going to just bring up, too, that we do receive, you know, it was around $140,000 from PDTA last year, um, public transportation, reinvestment in our community, we could use some of that money to provide other sources of public transportation. Right now, that's just going into our general fund. So um, there's also, Dave, let me know about the an Uber fee that we get for Ubers in the area, which is around $4,000 a year. You're talking about earmarking existing, but I mean, we actually are using that money to fund our operating budget. We are, we are, yeah. We are using it for but that right now. But we could earmark it for putting back into the community for public transportation. The, the Uber money is not to be used for the uh, general funds. It's supposed to be used specifically for enhancing public transportation. So that would be, that could cover the concrete pad, $4,000. I would still somehow try to find out how they, how they approach private because, uh, like I said, if they're going to put it on Hampshire Mall, it's going to be on Hampshire Mall land. Mm -hmm. If you put it on Mount Farms Mall, it's going to be on Mount Farms Mall land. It's not going to be on town property, or it'll be on state property on a bike path. Mm -hmm. But in order for the grant to go through, they still need the backing of the town. Yeah, and we would have to uh, have a big, big um, part of it's a, you know it's through D DOT, so we'd have to have a show of support from our JTC member. Um, who I assume is maybe, the deputy maybe director. Can, yeah, maybe you can get all the district too and find out how they're doing it in these other towns. Maybe the state's got a little loophole. I mean, if we wanted to learn more about it, I can invite Chris <coughs> to one of our meetings and we can learn more about it. He'd be much better versed in it or than me. Or if he has so. some other information about private entities, you know. Yeah. The well, public, the public private uh, programs that they have out in the state are, are working pretty well in some places. So, so let's, let's have him come in and another meeting. Yeah, I mean, is anybody opposed to pursuing it? No, as I mean, long as it's not going to cost the town anything. Yeah, as long as it don't cost the town anything. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my thing. I mean, we can go on it tonight to go forward as long as it doesn't obligate us to, to move forward with it. Because if we're just signing on to the grant application, why not get moving right. on it? And yeah, yeah. We're not I mean, we can look at that right now. And right. if we, he actually said the CMAC grant, you know, they already got one. So are they going to get another one or not? It's right. they right. don't know for sure. So, so I'll make a motion to to show support on behalf of the town of Hadley to pursue the grant. Second. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. And not too bad. Um, municipal Building Committee, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So would you like to take the floor, David? And sure. tell us what your meeting entailed last night. And, um, yeah, and well, I'm not calling to order our own committee meeting. We don't have a quorum, so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> last night we met, uh, subsequent to your request for us to, to establish a, um, essentially a scope of work for what could be a clerk or the works position to manage the overall program of buildings that are going to be constructed. Mm -hmm. um, I think in one of your late December meetings, I sent you a list that was a rather lengthy list of all the scope items which I felt were was necessary, recognizing that they were uh, somewhat duplicative of uh, the OPM, individual OPM's responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, you, you all asked us to kind of boil that down a little bit, think about it, and also meet as a committee, which we had not had a scheduled meeting up till that point. So we did meet last night. Uh, Christian was in attendance uh, for your group. And uh, essentially what I did, and I, I apologize if, if have you all seen it or do not have a copy of the, the table that I created? We, we got it. I, I forwarded you, it to David. Everybody's got a paper mm -hmm. copy or something to follow along with. Okay. I have one. So there's, I, I have about seven or eight copies if anybody else wants to. Could I just I'll take one just to, can I share yours? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have it, but it's kind of cut off. Okay. Anyone else? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, check, check. Okay, so uh, <laughs> essentially I made a couple of columns here and and started to break down uh, all the activities which I recognize <laughs> are necessary to for someone to manage. And, and I think part of our discussion last night had more to do with uh, exactly how a person or a group might be empowered uh, to act as a representative for the town in certain types of disputes or, or even just managing the program. Um, we have two OPMs. Both OPMs report to uh, building committees, which I believe were not appointed or, or elected official. I mean, so I, I, the the marching, the, the way the way that these committees report up to the select board is it's a little bit jagged in terms of a hierarchy, right? Um, so we're running through some scenarios by which you know, if we're building these two projects, we have two very capable OPMs working on this, but, but the work is all in parallel. If there's a discussion or dispute over something happening, something needs to be prioritized over another. Uh, how is that kind of dispute brought up through someone else who is empowered to act on behalf of the select board or at least get the right people in the room to discuss this and, and act quickly to resolve these issues? So I think that was part of our concerns, you know, who that person is. Is that a town employee? Is that uh, the project consultant that we have uh, through our task order assignments? Is it a more overarching responsibility of the OP <coughs> excuse me of the OPM that we have uh, that's acting on behalf of the town for multiple projects, which is Collier's, or or is it someone else? Um, and Gary Berg's name came up as a as a possibility, um, and so. You know, there was discussion without really a lot of resolution there. Um, I think really what we needed to may maybe more clearly understand was exactly what the scopes of work are currently for the two OPMs. Um, you should know the OPMs did both take a look at this document and uh, back in early December kind of you know, looked at it and said, you know, this is this is more or less in line with what our expectations are of our scope. So, um, in in this scenario, I tried to sort of boil it down and say, you know, the OPMs are going to act on, you know, in, in accordance with their scopes of work and, and perform what they need to perform. Uh, they're going to provide schedules for you, the select board, to review. 
Um, it'd probably be a good idea for somebody to put together a master schedule that shows all the building activities happening on one piece of paper, which we really not had through this process. Um, we have, of course, the activities that are happening here at Town Hall or pertaining to the renovation work. Those will have to be managed. Um, and that's part of what I put in the project consultants uh, columns. We have the Goodwin Memorial Library potential storage, and how that's going to be undertaken. Um, so again, I put that in the project consultants categories. Uh, we did discuss this and in, in, uh, recognize that there's some concerns over the exact locations of some of these departments and the walls that we're possibly modifying around them. And um, you know, if if we're not past that, if you all are not past it or want us to further communicate with these departments or do additional analysis to understand what their space requirements are, our project consultant Larry Tuttle could of course, you know, meet with them, interview them, and, you know, maybe come up with some options to go through. Or if you all say we're past that, we're going to do what we what we proposed previously, then fine. But that's on here as well. So Larry's the person that we hired originally to Correct. help he's us our, with he's buildings. Correct. on-call uh, task order uh, project consultant. Okay. And you're comfortable that he has the skill sets to, I mean, have you talked to Larry about all of this, I'm assuming? Yes, nope. we, we have. Yeah. We have, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, he could, he could act as a program manager, a clerk of the works, or simply undertake task orders like organizing what happens here. Um, uh, you know, our concerns, I guess, maybe are circled around, you know, if this, is this person truly empowered to act um, at, on, you know, in that right. regard? Right. I, I was doing some thinking just after our meeting and today is just, it seems to me we have like two phases, right? First phase is get ready, get, get ready to get everybody out of the hooker school and get them out of the hooker school. And then our second phase is the actual construction phase. And right. so just thinking about it, my my thoughts are we need somebody like Gary with Larry's help to kind of get everything rolling yeah. out of the hooker school and yeah. into here, whether we need to make modifications, right? You know. But you now you also have to keep things. in mind that Larry does not work I mean Gary Gary Larry Gary does not work for the municipal building committee. He works for the town of Hadley in the DPW department. That's right. And he has other yeah. responsibilities, so we want to be but, conscious of that before but we can yeah. we can we vote or have him focus his time more on well, this municipal building issue? It's not our job. Christopher Okafer of day three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea. Well, I also feel like we need but to make progress on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, I'm just putting it out there because yeah. I think we need yeah. to make progress on this and we need a person that's got time to do it. So can we, um, yeah, yeah, and I agree with, with Christian. I mean, this is, time is of the essence, and if, if we keep discussing this, we're going to be at the end of next summer already and still talking about it. Oh, no, well, they're going to be moving. they got to get moving. But and, and so that's what I, OTD. I want to put it to rest, the idea that we're going to re-interview departments and reorganize things and go back to square one on the, oh, no. put that. I think we'll pass that. I think yeah. it, I would say so, too. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it may not be the most ideal locations, but it's what they got to do. How long has Larry been with us now? About two, two, three years. Two yeah. years, three years. He's done. And if everybody's comfortable stories. with his work, I, I don't see why we wouldn't you hmm? use him appropriately. So, as far as Gary goes, um, and Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Gary was hired to deal with municipal building issues. Mm -hmm. you know, most part, correct. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that not much of his time has been allowed to work on municipal building issues because he's dead DPW and they've got other tasks for him. So uh, obviously we probably need to talk to Mr. Okafor about this, but I think that, I mean, th this is a priority here, especially this time of year when the work yeah. workload is relatively low without snow so far at the DPW. Um, 
<laughs> no, once no. Now we're gonna blow Can't wait to go see uh, you. He's like, the he spent a lot of time up over the police and fire station too with their issues. There's, there's a lot of maintenance yeah. issues over there, and then we created the ambulance service, which he's put a lot of time in there also. No, and I'm not saying that he's not doing any work. I'm just saying that no, no, no. no this I'm needs to be the priority yeah. because this is going to cost us big money if we are delayed with the move, and so maybe tasking him to either the building department or the municipal building committee temporarily so that we How would you like to be the one since you're the I'd con be happy to. contact person <laughs> yeah. for the DPW yeah. to right. talk with uh, Chris and uh, see if we can I mean, is, is Gary that? pretty much done with, with what they need to do over at police and fire station right now? Yes. No. So this next project coming up will take up a lot of time. So no, over but there right now is the uh, second floor HVAC system. I heard the new pump screwed up. Can, can we just take a quick time out? I just want to, I, I am totally on board that this is a huge priority, okay? But I'm also worried about precedent setting. We do have a DPW director. We have an individual reporting to the DPW director. Granted, the guy just started. I'm sure he's going to be listening with, with, you know, vehemently, you know, listening and taking into whatever <coughs> direction the select board is setting for him, which is going to be like, we have this imminent issue and we have to get it moving. Mm -hmm. But I want to be just really careful on the language we're using. I don't want in any way to, as a select board, be directing any employee who reports to somebody else to, to do anything. I think the, the proper protocol would be for us to engage with our DPW director because he does have another other duties. So before we sit here saying this is absolutely the priority and only Gary can do it, we, we better find out what else Gary's not going to be doing when he's doing this and have a plan for that. I, I mean, this makes an awful lot of sense, but I just want to be careful that we're not you know, on a Wednesday night, just sitting here saying, you know, well, that's why that. I suggested that David have conversation. Yeah. I think I think that's the way to go, and not have with us. him and have him. But he was hired at for municipal building purposes, and this is probably I would say the top priority. Of well, that's the conversation that you can have yeah. with, with and Chris find out what else is on his plate, David. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Because yeah. there have been other times where we we assumed, and then we found out that all of a sudden all these other balls dropped because. The select board took action not really i don't think no. any of okay. us have a problem but i think yeah. i would like you to have conversation with chris and just see what we can do to get this to happen using gary and making sure that nothing else needs to get looked at while he's doing this so i think what we need from the select board then and tonight if possible so we can move this forward is to make sure that we have some sort of structure of who he's going to report to, whether it's the building commissioner, or whether it's going to be somebody else, because if, if he is able to spare Gary and get him working, then he should be able to get working on it tomorrow if he's able to, rather than have to wait until our next meeting and decide who he's going to report to yeah, and everything I'm, else. I'm so, fine with that. Phil, do you see um, anything within this now that you've had a chance to look at that? Are there any overlapping jobs that look redundant to you that no I think it's broken down good broken yeah, down good. David asked for me and Mark Sheldon to reply and this matches up okay. with what we replied to him. okay what do you so that's good I, I would only comment that um, this is this is good it, it's and it's really in line with when you hold a construction meeting you have fair representation from professionals like Colliers and Sullivan but you generally have a client in the room as well whoever that person is and if you know that person really can't be another consultant like Larry Tuttle. It has to be a representative of the town. So I think, you know, putting someone like Gary in that position is really... Uh, okay. Okay. You're familiar with all the buildings and the operations right now. Okay, David, did you make... Gary is a union employee, so the, the chain of command would be through the DPW director, unless we wanted to take him out of the union temporarily. Is, is there a way that he could be through the DPW director? I, and I'm not saying uh, we're making a decision for Mr. Okafor, but I'm just saying is it, if he delegates authority, it, yeah, could he delegate the authority to say Tim or somebody else? Sure, just so, just as long as we have the union contract in our mind and how that works. We may want to run it by the union rep just to be 
Yeah, I don't see a problem with this. You just did it. You got just a union personnel up. right now in the foreman's <coughs> position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to make a motion, that, and thank you for all of the work. This was very clear. I looked at it and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. You know, breaking apart the responsibility. I'm sorry it was at the last minute. We just we couldn't talk about it until last night, so mm -hmm. no, that's there wasn't fine. a lot of Look, Looks very detailed for us to have something to go mm -hmm. on. So I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation for the Division of Responsibilities as presented by the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, move forward with engaging Larry Tuttle. And, uh, David, I'm sorry, are we fine with engaging with him with any procurement? Uh, yeah, they, they up the uh, threshold to 30000 okay. so we're good. Uh, moving forward with the um, hiring of Larry Tuttle and requesting that David Phil, <laughs> 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 but David, um, Phil, as the liaison to the DPW, um, act on our behalf to work with Mr. Okafor to be certain that uh, we're clear on what uh, Mr. Berg might not be doing if he's doing this or come up with a plan B to make this happen, including dealing with the union. Would he report to Tim or to? Not to Tim. Not I mean, to Tim. Uh, he would report. Tim's, Tim's going to be inspecting the work that's good, getting done. Yes. So yeah. who would he report to? Chris Okafor. What? But he's I'm saying for the actual building, the coordinating moves and everything else here at Town Hall. And, uh, He'd orders. still be reporting to Chris, wouldn't he? Well, it's got to go to David too. I mean, yeah. everybody's going to know what's going on throughout these yeah. projects. Yeah, I think I think that um, I make sense. The chair makes sense. Well, then in that way, then it also informs the other OPMs for the senior center and the library that you're kept within the loop also of uh, getting things done in a timely fashion too. So I think you know there's quite a bit of sharing here uh, as we move along and reporting to it would be David and the DPW director um, who would then share with the OPMs and uh, and them and bring all the yeah, issues I, back to the board at our so meetings I just one, have I'm gonna have a monthly meeting or something or they, they can come and address the board once a month on progress or whatever we have meetings whatever twice we a month if not more coming up <laughs> so there's always going to be that opportunity to I think it's um, just going to be stay, on the agenda. It's going to stay open on the agenda till it's mm. done at this point. Mm. Chris, did you? You'll two, two comments real quick. One is I want to ask Phil a question for during the construction, and two is we still have to talk about budget for these things. So, just to start, um, Phil, what where I see so phase one, I see us kind of having to handle that in house because we're doing modifications to the town hall the move of other people out of the hooker school. I don't know if that's in your realm or if you're just the seniors. Right, so my realm would be once the senior center building's built and occupiable, yeah. um, moving the senior center staff from wherever they're gonna be to the senior center building. And then during the construction. So, so just a time, ahead, time out, that's different from what you told me the other day. Nope. I told you the other day yeah. that the scope that we have for move services is to move the senior center staff into the new senior center building. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. And then a couple of months ago, we were talking at the senior center building committee meeting, and you wanted some other some new subcommittees for during the construction. Yeah, is what are those committees? I don't remember so, what they were. So, like David exactly. Tugin just brought up, yeah. you know, at a weekly project meeting, you know, besides me, yeah, you'll, and besides the architect, you'll have like a building committee member or two building committee members there. Mm -hmm. So we set that up. I can't recall the exact people, but I think Gary Berg might be one of them. Mm -hmm. Jane okay. or Suzanne might yep. be. So that was that. Okay. And then once um, construction gets underway, you typically have a finance subcommittee to deal with uh, proposed change orders um, and all that stuff. Okay. So who's going to be the, because I know when I was on the school building committee, when we had a change order or whatever, it went through the OPM and the bills were submitted to the select board at the time for any change orders or anything of that nature. 
And so the it, bills were submitted to the select board. It can be, I mean, however you want it to be. Um, you know, so we're going to have monthly payment applications from a general contractor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those can go through the select board. They can go through David, however that needs to be. I'll be the one reviewing them, vetting them. And then proposed change orders. Ideally, there's a dollar amount set that the finance subcommittee has um, the ability to approve so not to slow down construction. So say, for example, it's it's a 10 grand cap. Mm -hmm. And so up, up to $10,000, that finance subcommittee can, can approve a certain scope, change order scope, you know, that I vet prior to presenting to them um, in the event we got to keep things moving. Um, but then, you know, if it's not, not that scenario, you know, monthly uh, uh, finance uh, update can be provided to the select board if it needs to be like that, um, listing out the proposed change orders and, and so on. Okay. So. Okay. And I think one concern we had at last night, some of the discussion revolved around the library is getting constructed, the senior center is getting constructed. And the fire uh, station. Yep. Uh, and, well, just that site, right? And yep. there's, you got your two little roads going in there. Yep. And what happens when the conflict comes up where a cr crane's blocking the road and concrete trucks have to come in at the same time and it's just yeah. a cluster and how do you how do you do that conflict resolution between well that's you up, that's up to them to be well, honest with you, that, that's up to a general contractor bidding the work exactly. he understands what he's bidding and Okay, but, but do we need uh, another do, person there to run conflict resolution? No. No, uh, no, I don't feel like you do. Okay. Um, no. But no, yeah, I mean, that's, you're going to have logistic yeah. issues at whether it's a wide open <laughs> site or what we have, it's, so no, I don't think yeah. you need another Okay, body, okay. No. Yeah. And then my last comment was just for the work that we have to do to town hall and possibly moving, I don't know what expenses will be incurred moving, we do need money to do those things and where do we get money from, you know, how do we, I feel like our numbers are, we have a number, but I don't know how solid those numbers are. Route nine. <laughs> yeah, you know, so how, how do we, do we need to vote that we have a twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 budget to do these renovations and move to, on the town hall front? Or do we have available money? Do, we have, we, do we have a good estimate? I, I think this is like the cart before the horse. I feel like if we had Let's say, Gary, if we're able to get this, really focus on this, get some very solid numbers, work with you on prevailing wage, all these things, I feel like we can get solid numbers where right now, I don't know, I'm looking to Tim as, do we have good numbers to yeah, we have good proceed numbers. forward? So we have, there's three areas in the town hall that there's going to be some modifications to. Um, Gary did go out, go get, um, solicit some bids. Uh, we do have some estimates on the work. So it's broken down into, we'll call construction, electrical, and some plumbing. We're going to use our electrical, I would assume we're going to use our uh, contract electrician. He's talked to him already about that and that, how much that would cost. And we talk, he talked to the plumber that we have figured out what those places are. So we have a good concrete number. And it's Why do we need a plumber for moving? What are we doing with a plumber? Fill me in. You're referring to the modifications to, to town yes. hall, not mm -hmm. move what? costs. But what, what would be the plumber be involved heating. with the move cost? Yeah. It could be some heating pipes. It could, we don't know. We're not changing any anything we within the structure exactly of the building. What's in some of the walls. In, in and there is some piping that might have to be modified. So I've already ran into this trouble with the boxes, with the ductwork, mm -hmm. with, yeah, with the last project, the last little upgrade we had. Yeah, but we're, we're tr really not trying to upgrade anything. We're trying to make we're trying to, fit we're trying to make do with what we have. And and the bottom line is, and what I said the last time, is everybody is just going to have to use what we have until these projects are done, and and then we can. See find out where everybody's going to be dispersed to afterwards. So what we need to get done is make accommodations for people right now. And we did do that. that exactly, we did. But there, we're also going to have to use what we have without expending a lot of money. 
we're not spending a lot of money. To well, twenty-three thousand dollars to me is a lot of money that I saw come across my plate. Well, well, I think to Christian's point, what we being, should see is an actual you know, detailed plan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then we can react to the funding once we have a plan. Because to just pick a number, I'm not that's writing a check. Yeah, yeah. check for twenty-three thousand dollars, not knowing where it's going to get and spent. You know, unfortunately, what's happened is we got stuck in this issue with the DPW because everything goes from MBC, MBC uh, our, our committee, Gary's worked it out and then goes to DPW director. And it kind of got lost at the show. We, I unfortunately assumed that it was presented to David. It wasn't. Okay, I tried sorry, to get together. Are you talking about this week or are you talking about Marlo before he left? Marlo before he left. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, I, we, I was on the assumption that there was, it had been dispersed. Yeah. And now I'm finding out, I was trying to get together with David last week, sit down and go through all this stuff. We, weren't a, we were not able to do that. Yes, we need to get everything on paper to show you exactly what everything is. Yeah. But what was asked of me was what is the highest the number that we're looking at? It's mm -hmm. 22. Can it be lower? Yes. But, I mean, it's realistically, we can't shove everybody into this entire building mm -hmm. without some type of slight modifications. I mean, we just don't have that many places to put everybody. Right. So. So, so assuming that, you know, David Phil has his conversation, everything's copacetic with Mr. Okafor, they work it out, and again, just making sure that whatever Gary's not doing, there's coverage if it's important to and he's off and running, um, I mean, for, I mean, it seems to me fairly quickly a meeting could be pulled together yes. with the appropriate parties the, the to put together we can get it a plan, together. right? Mm -hmm. And then, so what I'm asking is, would it, would it be too late for us to have that at our next meeting? And, no, and, okay. because those figures are around. Okay, because nobody's trying to, to delay, but again, no. if we don't want to be just, like Joyce says, just throwing yeah. money at something we don't even know we're throwing it at. So, and Phil, what is the time frame that we want to start this move? What's the date? Well, the library project, I want to say that they want to start a date in May 1, May 1st. Right. So, senior center-wise, oh, so senior center is March 1st. Right. Um, so, we want people out of there before March 1st. Correct. Before? Well, so. No. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. We're breaking April ground 1st. on the new building March, yeah. March 1st. April okay. 1st was the date we were told we needed to be out. Okay. Right. And in the... The senior center construction project had always anticipated that was going to be occupied. That building was going to be occupied while we start. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So I made a motion. I don't know if there was a second. Second. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it on the tape. <laughs> Any other discussion on this? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate this. We can move forward. So. We'll stay tuned for your next meeting. Um, so we're actually hiring Larry, or we're using him? He's already hired. He's already hired. Yeah, we're using He's the services. He's already, he is. Okay. And then David's going to meet so with. we don't have to hire another person. No. Okay. That's, that was. What you thought. No, that's no. what you guys. That's what oh, that's right. You were not the last few meetings. That's I watched, true. <laughs> I watched it. I'm like, why are they hiring another person when we already have? Because we wanted years. you to get right up and come over oh, and right. talk to us. <laughs> oh, I got a lot to say. Don't worry about that. I usually do. Okay. Anything else, David? I think we're good, Joyce. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Phil. Yeah. See you Friday. <laughs> <laughs>
with Fire station. the church with the senior center? Can you update that? Yeah, so we have to observe their internal process. Apparently the church uh, parish uh, finance committee is meeting on Monday. We do have a draft uh, proposal London. in hand. It's actually the parish council, I think, but she's going to the finance committee. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, we do have a draft proposal in hand. I haven't had a chance to read it. I just received it. Uh, I have sent it over to the assessors to find out what tax impact may apply. Haven't digested. I've received information, but I haven't digested it yet. So uh, we'll have that uh, that proposal in front of you all as soon as possible. But it looks like it's beginning to come together. And then the Library Building Committee, uh, we met last night, Tuesday night, um, and that's moving along. Uh, we were looking, uh, so they're actually, the next stop is next Tuesday going to planning board. Mm -hmm. um, and if you recall, at the planning board meeting last, um, after they you know got through their vote on the site plan, there were some questions and they asked the library building folks to come back in specifically they wanted to see the vegetation plan. Um, so that's all completed. I believe they sent everything off to either Bill or Jim today. Um, so that's kind of the next big thing, but you know, not not really anticipating any too much excitement around that. Looks pretty perfunctory. Okay. But famous last words. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that they're going to the church. Um, some people some people are coming here. Who's going to the church? Who's going here. Well, we have. Oh, yeah, it hasn't been decided. Council on Aging and the Veterans Services are going to go to the church. Historic Commission, Park and Rec, Planning Board are going to come here. And have the media. <coughs> have the, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, fire, fire station um, committee meeting will be tomorrow night. We have a, anything new. Since then, I did get a <coughs> new agenda. We've been going before the planning board with some preliminary uh, meeting um, in February. So that will get started then. Uh, that's all I have from them right now. Uh, all our plans are pretty well set. We've done some changes in the inside the electrical area, things like that. So it's all coming together. I think we received a letter from somebody interested in some land there. Yeah, and remember, <coughs> we, we, we already voted. Not to that's the same it. person yeah. that okay. was interested okay. before. Okay. That's yeah, one person on one side and then the burns on the other Correct. side. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and we had voted that at this time that we are not interested in okay. selling any part of the property. Yep. Uh, let's do Linda. You want to talk mm -hmm. about treasurer and tax collector legislative changes? Um, those are coming up. Those took effect with Governor Baker passing that this week. Um, so you are the first on the agenda. <laughs> you do yes. not have to run for re-election this year. That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. You don't have to stand out there with your... Just in time. <laughs> I did it twice. <laughs> so yes. um, very much looking forward. I think we had discussion before that um, just set up a contract. Is that not correct, David? Right. So uh, you know, the discussion has always been that you have two excellent people who are doing an excellent job in terms of tax collection and in terms of managing the, the Treasury. Uh, and so we, we had asked town meeting to support special acts of legislation. They did. And they went through the House of Representatives and the Senate and uh, signed by the governor. So now it takes effect. Uh, we certainly want to keep with the winning team that we currently have. Uh, the legislation provides for a contract if you want to enter into a contract. Uh, but uh, if we should talk about the process of making a smooth transition from your elected term, which expires on April 9th, mm -hmm. and the appointed term, which would, would begin that midnight. Uh, so do you want to have some sort of negotiation about a contract? What is the process that you want to follow? Well, we should certainly have set up a contract, so um, you could certainly look at other towns and think, see what we need to 
have for a contract. Um, Molly, you're working with the town um, offices and things. Did you have any input on to? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I guess one question would be to do we want it to be a contract? Do we want it to be a job description? Right. You know, I mean, um, what? I think yeah. we need both, actually, don't we? Or uh, I think we need a job description. Well, we need a job description for right. sure. Right. For sure. Well, with the timing of, I know this is a year that you're going to be putting more money into town government, general government, and and one of the areas that's being discussed, um, or a couple of them, will impact the Treasury Department. Uh, what we're going to do with HR, whether we're going to have something more as far as uh, in, in um, Benefit. finance. Mm -hmm. um, any of these plugged in makes a shift in the responsibilities that is handled out of my office. Whether that also makes a specific change in the treasurer's specific job description or not, I don't know. Right. So I'm, I'm feeling somewhat flexible about this. If we have to have something in place, I think we can put something together, even if it's somewhat short term Temporary, while we work yeah. the rest of these out. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I want to make sure that this, it, it fits in with where the town wants to go in its next step, and that is not something that we put, that I don't want this job's description to be a fixed point that you have to work around, because I know that we're, it, we're sort of a, uh, we're a work in progress right now as to how we're going to handle some other things at town hall. So I've talked with David about this and how these various things are going to come together, hopefully come together at the same time because we have to have our budget in place, but I want to see, I want to make sure that um, what is described for me fits in with how we're handling these others and, and you know what we're doing with the assistant treasurer or whether she's going to be an HR. There's a lot I think I feel is quite up in the air right now so I'm okay being somewhat flexible if you're okay. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> are, uh, are who uh, the trip just the it, it was <laughs> flat before the structure of the town, you know, as voters, treasurer, tax collector, you know, right. um, mm -hmm. us town administrators. So are we, is the treasurer and tax collector <coughs> under us, a direct report to us, yep. or under yes. the town administrator? Okay. No, so, I mean, you get yeah. to make that decision. I, that, that's right. a decision yeah. I'm saying right. that we, yeah. I thought we'd have to they make. would automatically default to us until we did something okay. to the right. And do we have any opinions one way or the other on that? Not right now. Not right now. You have time to make that decision. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we could do is a uh, either a letter of intent or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. and that, so that way Some understanding. Right. Letter of understanding. So that yeah. that way you have something in writing that you'll continue on and be paid the same duty as you are and the same duties until such time that we can come up with a contract after the range and compensation study is done and the HR issue and all that kind of stuff. And, and April 10th is an awkward start anyways. Maybe it's something we, that you want to have something, we want to have something that gets to July 1 and then have July 1 and you're going to have that issue in <coughs> two years when the collector comes up. Right. It's, um, you know, that's just some thoughts there. And, and I think that the difference between April 9 and, and July 1 will be large because we will have resolved what you're going to be funding in town government and on how we'll be will be done with with the t main town meeting and right you'll like know that. what the budget is and where it is and where the money is and then we make the job description fit in what, yeah. what the decision but that's was because that, that protects everybody it's clear mm -hmm. you know what your compensation is yeah. Yep, sort of status yes. quo for the rest of the fiscal year. Right. Okay. Uh, Do you know what lawyers? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, well, she is one herself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably not advocating for myself as much as I could. But I am the town here. So I, I think that that's probably the best way. I think if this wasn't also the year where we're trying to figure out something different in with town government. I mean town government, I don't want people thinking we're talking about something huge, but you had said that we're putting the extra money into town hall government this year and it will involve looking closely at the, uh, particularly the uh, HR and finance corner of town hall. And so that's, um, I'm not talking about shifts all across the board, but these specific shifts will impact treasurer department and Mm -hmm. Obviously, the treasurer position. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Perfect. All right. We'll go back to direct local technical assistance grant applications. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> due on Friday. Uh, the uh, town is submitting four applications for technical assistance to help out with projects that we would have a hard time dealing with on our own. Uh, the planning board is submitting an application for the flood insurance maps and, and making sure that the proposed revisions are accurate or at least are they're come up with a methodology for testing the accuracy of those. So that's handled through the planning board. Through the site board, there are three applications. You'll remember the planning board came to the select board and talked about the need to do something about affordable housing. Yeah, we, we both have talked about this for a few meetings, actually. Yeah, this is a high priority for the DLTA program. So I've uh, put together an application to have us review our affordable housing currently and put together a strategy for making sure that we have a good mix of all types of uh, housing, affordable housing included, particularly keeping us above the 10% mark so that you're not subject to uh, Chapter 40B uh, subdivision that would uh, it's a type of subdivision that doesn't have to pay attention to local zoning. So those are just follow South Deerfield and the trouble that they're going into right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's number one. Number two is this is to implement a community compact uh, recommendation for financial management, which is to develop a comprehensive financial policy manual. We have a million policies that affect our finances, but they're spread out of a, a number of documents to so put together one cohesive manual that would be accessible by all decision makers. And three, to then the third one is a regional uh, grant application with Chesterfield as the lead community. We would be looking at the impact of OSHA requirements, particularly having to do with policy development and policy implementation that is required next month. So those are the three applications through the select board. February 1st, um, did you uh, do that webinar or not? Yep. So they pretty much explained they're, they are going to come around to every town, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that request it, yep. each department separately. So DPW, police, fire, whatever departments want them to come in and assess their facilities and operations, they will. Oh, she's still got the jurisdiction over uh, on the incident mm -hmm. on the private sector, but mm -hmm. the state's going to take over the inspections of incidents uh, in the public sector. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you, they just sent me another thing with all the contacts because they went through the program so quickly. It was, it was a two-hour program, but it was really informative of, mm -hmm. of who's who's doing what. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have had or already. Or do, do you report like when an incident happens? Who it, you have to report to? All, you went through all of that. Mm -hmm. um, they sent the the whole program again. So if you want to watch it and see who you need to contact, mm -hmm. we have unfortunately already been in contact and had an inspection initial inspection done. Uh, an incident in the wastewater, so we got our feet wet already, <laughs> and they will be back. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, we've invited them to look at DPW. So, yeah. but this would be this would be a comprehensive policy management policy but, but implementation. Separate, separate water, separate wastewater, because they both have individual needs mm -hmm. um, amongst each other. Okay. All right. Oh, I just want to go on record saying that my downsizing retirement plan, I've got my eye on David's chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> to live in? <laughs> Looking pretty palatial, I can tell. So I can't submit the grant applications unless you all vote to oh, okay. authorize them. It, and this is all through uh, Pioneer Valley Planning? Yes. Make a motion to approve the DLTA grant applications. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Thank you.
All right, old business, director of Department of Public Works. We have a contract. We have Mr. Christopher Okafor has been on the job for three days. Uh, and uh, I'm asking that you ratify the, the employment agreement. Okay, so is that a vote or did we just sign one? It'd be cleanest if you had a vote. Mm -hmm. Vote to ratify. Oh, okay, I'll make a motion that we ratify the contract with Chris Okafor for DPW director. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. On that note, are we going to release the vote at least on hiring a DPW director? You guys have an executive session. We haven't done executive session releases in quite some time either. So. We have a practice of doing it what, quarterly or <coughs> twice a year? Twice a year. Twice a year. I think we're a little delayed on that, uh, so we can, done we can review. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, I did talk to him uh, today, Mr. Okafer, mm -hmm. and uh, so far so good. He's getting everything, kind of getting used to, the, to things, and um, we're going to have a meeting next week and kind of go over his priorities of what he's learning. So, yes. so far. Department heads gave him a nice warm welcome today, too. Yeah. That's good. Nice. Good. So along those lines, I'm going to be with him on Tuesday morning next uh, in order to see what we can do about putting together the budget as well as reviewing projects that are outstanding. Do you want to coordinate with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll talk. Yep. And what's the status on Louis Bridge Road? Or, uh, that's see, on, that's seven point, that's 7.4. We're coming up to okay. it. Hang on. Uh, RFP compensation classification plan. So I've put together the RFP for the compensation classification plan. I've just asked that you review the scope of work. If you approve it, I'd be happy to set this out tomorrow, and we'll fast track this project. Anybody have a problem with that? Did they have a chance to read it? I did. I mean, it looked like it covered everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> the only thing, um, what was the deadline as far as? 2 p.m. on, there was no date there. Yeah, there's no date, so I would sit down with the calendar and work that out. But so if we voted tonight, then you would put the date in? Right. Date in. So I want the contractor to start no later than 14 days after the award. Right. Uh, I just meant the final results coming in so that we can work oh. on it and craft the, craft the budget for yeah. future years based on what. So call it 30 days to do it or 45 days to do it, something like that. We're talking probably March. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a vote? Yeah. Make a motion to approve the RFP compensation classification plan and send it out tomorrow morning. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall Realtor bid. And we did have one. Correct? Yes, we had one response to the RFP. Mm -hmm. um, it was a full and complete um, RFP proposal. Uh, there were a couple of form things that they're going to correct. I spoke to the person today, but it was styles and done. They're part of the Jones group of realtors. Um, it's actually uh, Karen and Luke, and they're a, a family team. Mm -hmm. uh, parents, child. Um, I talked to Karen today to just check on a couple of more things with her. Um, unfortunately, she does not have municipal sales experience, mm -hmm. which under the terms of the RFP means it, it's not advantageous for the town. That being said, I've done some research, and there's not a whole lot of realtors out there that have municipal sales experience that I found out there. Um, she does have experience doing historic preservations, historic restrictions, and things like that, which is the other part of what we asked her. Again, it's not municipal, it's on the private side. Um, that being said, sh the commission that they're requesting is on par with the 6%, which is what y'all were expecting from the last people who did have the experience. Are they asking for anything up front? They're not. Okay. It's, it, it's stated in there, and I also told her that we would be negotiating the contract terms, but that was part of it, and that was written into the RFP when we sent it out, that um, compensation is due at the end of the 
uh, the completion of the sale. Okay. Is there a motion? Are we, not a are we making a motion <laughs> to <laughs> accept I'm just, just not quite just, just, just accept it going? <laughs> accept to the review it. To accept the bid. Accept the bid. <laughs> motion to accept the bid. But we haven't yeah. seen anything, have we? Or we have to accept the bid to see it? No, but it's not a realtor service. This is just a real This is <laughs> service. It's confused it's I don't services, see it. that's all. There's no money. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not funny, no money. We want to sell is the building. Services. Okay. Services. Is it a percentage or it's six percent? Of it, I'm sorry, I did not load this all on there. Yeah, I um, see typically, it was just a big tabulation sheet is what I put on. Correct. Um, yeah. But I have everything here, and um, go to the right page. I believe it's two hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars is what she was suggesting it be listed at. But I'm going to hate it if I said that completely wrong. Got that money spent yet, Molly? Yeah, thinking about yeah, it. She'll go home and sleep on that tonight. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> 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 I can start around. I can make a motion to accept the bid mm -hmm. from Styles and Dunn. Yeah, second. Any further mm -hmm. discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. Okay. Four zero <laughs> one. And last but not least, we have Moody Bridge Road. David. Okay, so I met. Oh, that's not last, but almost. So I met with Mr. Okafor. Obviously, he doesn't have a detailed proposal for us, but the concept would be that uh, he's looking for a green light from the select board to move forward on the engineering, the permitting, and then the construction of the uh, the new culverts on uh, Moody Bridge Road, which had failed. I thought we'd already voted We already that. voted on that to give David the authority to get it done, and the road's still closed. Yeah. It was, um, it's okay, I don't care if the road's still, the, the neighbors down there are very happy that it's still closed. Not all tell of you. them. My wife almost got stuck. Not all of them, they're still complaining to you. Well, so. because people drive around it. Yeah. The, um, yeah. I thought the plan was to try to get it done under an emergency um, repair, repair in order to yeah. avoid some of the additional costs that mm -hmm. have been associated yeah. with yeah. the full engineering. So yeah. I just want to make sure that I guess we need to talk with them and make sure that we're on the same page there. Yeah. Yeah. The same company that did Schmur Road and did uh, the drain pipe up there on 47 we're pretty good working together with them. We did the work mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. and it went right along quick. They came out a couple times, and a couple issues we had. Even Jan Stone came out to look at it and said, "Just do whatever you got to do to get this thing open back up." You know? Okay. I, I know that if we do it the emergency way, it can be 50 to 80, and if we do it the other way, it can be 250 and mm -hmm. quite some time. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's do it your first way. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a slam. Seems like there's a slam dunk to be a yeah. Right. So do you need to have us? We, we I guess we gave you direction before, so right. let's just get it moving. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Get it moving. Yeah. Okay. Get her done. Get her done. Okay. I mean, and they patched it, and, and the road is still <coughs> accessible. I don't know why it's still blocked. I'm not sure either, but. License renewals. Are we all set on them? Um, there are five outstanding, mm -hmm. but the hundred dollar late fee worked really well. Thank you very <laughs> much. All the people I typically chase, I did not chase. They were all magically here when I walked in on January second. <laughs> um, Make it two hundred next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't had a response for the, the five that are outstanding. Um, I did hear that one of them, from the, from one of the businesses, I heard they are actually going out of business. I won't say their name because that's not fair to them right now. Um, and then I've heard rumors about the others, but they are not responding to me. So I will um, call them again and leave another message. Um, 
and then there'll come the point where if they don't have their food permits, the Board of Health is going to have to do a cease and desist, and Tim's going to have to get involved. I'm sorry? We, we, David, I was waiting for this meeting for y'all to tell me if that's where you want to go. Um, we just resolved the sewer issue over there in the Middle Valley. Bring them to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they paid. It's three car dealers and a common Vic is, is what is, is outstanding right now. Oh, that's, that's it. That's it. Okay. It's it's in all of the liquor licenses are way done. Those are the very big ones, mm -hmm. and um, there's a couple of others that are quite large just because of the number of licenses they hold. Like Global Spectrum holds a lot of licenses, so they're a large one. But these are all relatively small, as I understand. Some of the car dealers just aren't selling cars anymore. I think they're sort of retired out. They're just not telling me. So, but. If y'all want them brought in, I can send out letters and schedule them for upcoming meetings. I, I think, well, if they even come now, they'll still have the $100. Everybody's $100 late fee now. Um, technically, all of their licenses are expired now, so they need to renew them. Like, they don't, they're not just renewing, they would technically need to So do we need, need to apply. send them a letter and say that you do not have a license now? Because yes. I think, so yes. that's probably yeah, that's what we way, should do. do send them a letter. Okay. Would you mind? I don't have a license. No, I would okay. love to do that. Thank <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> I, I will do that. a letter and in that same letter say you have an appointment with the select board. Okay. Well, if you, if you intend to renew a simple yeah. application yeah. now. <clears throat> Can we, um, at least for the car dealers that maybe still have a physical location with cars, mm -hmm. make sure they understand that they should not be operating any business in the meantime? I will double check with Tim on all of them and make sure that they're not operating. If they if they're not in operation, um, it's not just us. They also have to have a surety bond. So there's the the class two auto dealers don't typically sell without. But I will um, circle back around with Tim and ask him to go out and make sure nobody is selling cars. Okay. So you, it looks like you have nine licenses that need to be approved. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Did you have anything in your report, David, that you need to tell us about, or did we cover it already? <laughs> we covered a lot of it, uh, just to let people know that uh, uh, things are very busy right now. Just to give an update on the, uh, the progress on the three buildings, March 1st, we're looking at the Senior Center groundbreaking. May 1st is the demolition of the Hooker School, so therefore April 1st is a good time for the big move. June 1st is the, uh, the library groundbreaking, and July 1st is the fire substation groundbreaking. So that's where we are with those. Uh, Took, taking care of the cemeteries in Hockenham, North Hadley Village, and the town meeting. We just took care of the OSHA update. Took care of. Uh, we finally got back from the state the uh, Housing Choice Small Town Capital Improvements Grant. They finally signed the contract, so we're now moving that project forward. That's the ninety-five thousand dollar repair to the water lines over on Campus Plaza Road, and. One question about this. Did we ever work out any of the details as far as it remaining as town housing? property or? No, yeah. I mean, as far as the affordable housing units. Oh, okay. Before we actually commit that money to the project. Because that was one of the points that we wanted to talk about in right. exchange for giving them a grant. Well, giving them the opportunity to read up is part of the grant uh, requirement, and so okay. we'll be having that conversation. Okay, I just want to make sure we too far. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <clears throat> we hired the DPW director, we talked about uh, Linda and Susan. Uh, the audit is almost done. We have a punch list of items that need to be addressed. 
uh, but the draft audit, audit is expected to be in advance of our scheduled springtime borrowing. Uh, community Compact IT grant, we just started that for the conversion of the VADAR systems downstairs in Susan's office, that's $19,350 for that project. And the Susan's office is going to be extremely busy for the remainder of the fall and spring, uh, winter and spring as they make that conversion work. Um, everything else we've taken care of. David, do you know, uh, that was the other question I was going to ask you on that OSHA thing. Um, they had mentioned uh, our insurance company, so MMIA, are they working with that new OSHA board? Yes. That you know of? So that's that's one of the things that prompted me to go for the DLTA grant. It's okay. Because we, the safety committee did meet with Maya, and they, they put on our place a group of work that everybody felt like they just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. So much in the way of developing policy, knowing what kind of policies to develop, implementing the, the policies, doing the self-assessment. Um, it just seemed like a, a amount of work, given everything else that we're doing, would, would, that would be something that we should farm out. The, the basic safety things are one thing, but the, the industrial type settings like the water department and the wastewater department, a more industrial setting rather than a, a municipal setting. Mm -hmm. So if MMIA is working with the with the state OSHA now, um, I, I'm sure that they're going to come up with some type of plans for some of these facilities, water facilities, wastewater for facilities throughout the state probably. Mm -hmm. Can you ask MMIA? Yeah. So we'll be seeing them next weekend and we can certainly ask them. The safety committee is uh, scheduled next to meet on March 20th, so we can keep that that conversation going. There were some questions, but I just couldn't take fast enough. I had for them. But yeah, they went off the air pretty quick mm -hmm. after the webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. 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 I have one from Jennifer. 2019 reservoir permits are available. See Jennifer. See Jennifer. Super. Mm -hmm. um, I've got announcements from the town clerk. Um, so at the town clerk's request, she would like us to remind everybody that town elections are coming up on April 9th. Um, the nomination papers are available in her office until February 14th. Valentine's Day, perfect time to take out papers. Um, and the last day to register to vote for the town election um, is March 20th. So in addition, uh, well actually just sticking on the town election, there are actually many seats that are up for um, either open or up for re-election. Two select board seats, one planning board seat, one school committee seat, and, and a host of others I can't even recall. No, I'm not going to wait till February 14th to get the papers on because <laughs> Melissa will hit me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you want that information, you can either contact the town clerk directly or you can go on the town website. And I believe that Hadley Media will also be um, putting those up if they haven't done so already. So. The other bit of good news from the town clerk's office is that the census is coming soon to your house. So please make sure you complete the census and return it as soon as possible. Okay. I have a thank you to the Hadley Garden Center, Tom and uh, Janine Giles, for the wreaths that we have on our um, town hall over the holidays. Thank them very much. They donate them to us every year. We do appreciate it. Thank you. We also have had, unfortunately, a sad uh, past month with many passings. Um, Ray Nelson Selig, Larry Smith, Evan Louise Mullen, Antonia Goodgen. Uh, condolences to all of their families. We have, uh, starting with the eldest, would be Lindell Day Nettleman at 100 years old. Um, her son James and of course her grandson JJ who um, took really good care of grandma. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Florence Davison, uh, she worked for our school department for many years uh, as secretary to the superintendent. She passed. Um, Bernice Drosdell, um, her daughter Patricia Alex lives here in town. Uh, John Haneski, uh, his wife Anna is still with us and so condolences to all of them. And the youngest would be Jamie McCauley Tudrin. Uh, our condolences to Matt and Elaine on, on their passing, on her passing. Um, so sad for all of us from the select board. And that's it for me. Anything? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good evening. Good night.